most of the rest of the action script we're going to be using in our website is going to be attached to a button. So let's go over how to create a button symbol. Now what I like to do if it's our first button is make a button that we can kind of throw away. So let's do that off in another file. We can come back to this one once we understand how a button gets put together. I'm going to go off to the file menu over here. I'm going to choose new and I'm just going to create a brand new ActionScript 3 flash file. Now a button's a symbol and we already know how to make a symbol. We've made lots of movie clips so far. Anything I select can be made into a symbol and that includes a button. So let's just make a nice simple shape that we can work with to get things started. I'm going to go set up a couple of colors that we can use for our button. I'll set a stroke color of blue and we'll set a fill color of kind of a bright orange. And I'll just choose an oval tool here and I'll draw out an oval that I'm going to use as my button. We already know how to make a symbol. I'm just going to go back to my normal selection tool. I'll select both of those objects, the stroke and the fill, and I'm going to press F8. Let's give our button a clever name like, let's say, button. And really the only thing I'm going to do different is underneath the type menu, I'm not going to choose movie clip, I'm going to choose button. I'll click OK, and I've got a button. Now I like to point out that flash buttons are kind of smart. They have built-in features, and that's what we like about them. We can actually see one built-in feature right off the bat without doing anything else yet. Now, in order to actually test our buttons, we're going to want to test the movie and compile a Swift. So, let's do that. I'm going to use Control Enter, Test Movie, and of course that's Command Return on the Mac. There's my movie that we've just created. And you'll see what I'm talking about when you roll your cursor over this button. As I get close to it, you can see that the cursor turns into a hand tool. So our button automatically has built-in cursor feedback. We didn't have to write any script or do anything at all. Also notice that the button shape is very particular. I have to actually roll over the button shape in order to activate this button. Now buttons are going to do a few more things for us, but we'll have to set them up. So let's close our test movie and we'll go back to our button shape. In order to access the rest of the features of our button, we're going to need to edit it, but we already know how to do that too. It's a symbol after all. If this was a movie clip, we just double click it to edit it, and we're going to do the same thing to our button. I'll just go over to it and double click. You can see that we're opening up our button right here, and we've got a timeline and a set of layers. But the first thing we'll notice is that the timeline is a little bit different. Instead of having a whole bunch of numbers at the top, we have the words up, over, down, and hit. And those correspond to pre-programmed states that my button will be in. Now this still is a timeline, so we still work with it under normal timeline rules. We just have these special frames. The up frame corresponds to the state of the button when it's just sitting there. Think of a button on your keyboard. It has a spring underneath it that's pushing it up. So normally, all of our keyboard buttons are in the up state. Now the over state is simply when you roll the cursor over the button. The down state will be when you push the mouse button down on top of the button. Now let's experiment with these first three states and we'll come back and find out what hit is afterwards. If I want to change something in one of these states, I would need a keyframe. Remember on a normal timeline, all of our changes occur at a keyframe. So I can go to the over frame here, I'll just click in it, and select that frame like I would any other frame. And if I wanted to create a change, I would add a keyframe with F6. So let's go ahead and do that. Now F6 normally creates a copy of whatever the last keyframe contained. So right now I have two orange buttons. But they're separate, as we've seen from normal timelines. So I should be able to take this orange button, which is in the over frame, and just change the color. Let me click on it. I'll just go down to my properties here, and let's make it, let's say, green here. Now, this timeline does have a playhead. It's really big, but if I move it around, I can see that the up is still orange and the over is now green. Let's set up a down state while we're at it. I'll just click in the frame. I'll add a keyframe, and of course, that's F6. And now I have a copy of whatever was in my last frame, the green oval. And let's just change that color, too. I'm going to change it to kind of a light blue. There we go. So now our button is going to be 
orange when it's in the up state. It's going to be green when you roll over it. And it's going to be blue when you press down. Now, let's see how this works. Again, we can only test our buttons while the movie's running in test mode. So I'm going to use test movie. That's control enter or command return on the Mac. There's my button. So let's try it out. I'm going to roll over it. And now, in addition to the hand cursor, I'm seeing the green oval. That's what we put in the over state. Now, if I press my mouse button down while I'm rolled over this, I would be pressing down on the button. And that's when I see the blue oval. If I let go of the mouse button, I'll go back to the green because my cursor is still over it. And if I roll off of it, it's going to go back to its normal up state. Now that we've seen what the first three states do, let's see what that hit state does. I'll close up our test window. And first of all, the hit state is not going to be visible. Our first three states definitely are, and they correspond to those mouse movements that we talked about. We can also start things off by saying the button is hittable if you hit on the shapes. Now, if you have a consistent shape like we do, each one of our states is oval and in the same place, the hit state isn't really necessary. But if you put different graphics in the up, over, and down states, and let's say they're different shapes, then you might want to put something in the hit state just to make the button more consistent. Let's try this out. I can go over to the hit state and add a keyframe, just like we did to the other ones. I'll click on it and press F6, and it copied our blue oval in here. Now, what this is going to do, now that we have a hit state located inside that keyframe, is this blue oval right here represents the part of the button that you have to be over in order to hit the button. If you don't put a hit state in, the button looks to the shapes of the other buttons in order to determine what's hittable. Now, by adding the oval in the last frame, that's the same as the oval in all the other three frames, we're not going to really see a difference. But if I change this oval, let's just modify the shape a little bit. I'm going to pull this oval in. It's kind of flattened on the bottom. And remember, we won't see this at all. Now let's test our movie with this new hit state. Now, if I roll over the bottom part of the button, it's not activating the button. We'll have to remember what that shape looked like. But if I move my cursor up enough, I'm going to hit that hit shape, and then the button will be activated. Now, in our case, this has actually created a weird button. I wouldn't recommend doing this for a real button out there. But let's say you had a button with exceptionally small graphics. Under normal circumstances, that button would be kind of hard to hit. So you could add a hit state with an enlarged graphic just to make it easier for your user to find, roll over, and click that button. Now, those are the base states that we want to fill up in order to create a button. So let's go ahead and close our test window here. And we can go back to our Flash site, and we can create the buttons we're going to be using for our website.